Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, should be home any second. She should be off of work right now. And today we are doing a knife talk. And today's knife talk is going to be about blade steels, blade drawings, and HRC. And why we want one so much over the other. And I also want to first thank the person that sent us sent us these amazing red micarta scales you know who you are these things are absolutely epic you know i loved the black g10 scales that i had on here prior to these you know before these they were nice and smooth and they were really nice really comfortable but this the red micarta oh it just looks so good the colors the black and red this thing's just I love this thing. This thing is absolutely amazing. This McCart has done so well. RC Blade Works. That's what kind of or that's where they come from. Okay. So, and right before we get into this knife talk, I want to mention our giveaway. This is the Kubi Nova that we are giving away to one of our Patreons. So, if you want a chance to win this knife or other monthly giveaways, uh, become one of our Patreons. You become a Patreon for little as three dollars a month, ten cents a day, and every month we're going to give away something new. Okay, or something else, I should say. Next month, I think we got a pretty cool giveaway we're going to do. All right, so, Spyderco Shaman. Very cool, very awesome. We're going to set that there. And then also the same person that sent me these scales sent me some other knives to sharpen form. And um, so, and it's kind of go, going to go into this topic. I was talking to um, somebody on the comments and um you know i i didn't tell him i was gonna say his name so i'm not going to but um anyways me and him were talking and we were talking about he knows who he is um we were talking about hrc and steels and also the grinds and why people like so many companies are selling steals for like a budget right and how how many people do you know or how many times have you even you see um a knife say this says it's 20 cv or m390 or some type of super steel and it's for a really good deal like a really good deal and people are flocking to it people are wanting that that knife because it's like well man i can't find that blade steel you know that cheap anywhere else and instead of looking at the blade grind, right? So why are we as consumers so infatuated with the blade steel? The person who sent me the scales also sent me this knife to sharpen. Very, very cool. I'll talk about the edge in just one second because um, anyways, but we're, we're trying to get these super steels when the heat treat is most likely not very good. And then, or not, not saying, you know, I'm not talking about any specific company right now. I just want you guys to know. But instead of looking at the grind, right? To me, in my opinion, I would rather get, say, a 14C28 on like these knives right here. That has a good heat treat over, say, an M390 knife with a bad heat treat. Now even more than, or not even more than that, I'm not gonna say that. And to even perk it even more, if I can get a knife with great blade geometry, where the, the edge is uh, has got a very good thin edge, you know, not too thin, but a good thin edge, and then the, the taper from here to here is done well it's done in a performance way it's done in a way that when i put it through materials the blade is made to just pass through materials effortlessly rather than say a knife that has a super steel yet is thick behind the edge or you know just has bad blade geometry so it doesn't matter that it has great steel if it's not going to go through anything or at least go through anything, you know, comfortably, you know, obviously, you know, most knives are always going to cut. You're going to be able to sharpen it, but that, you know, does it do it well? Is the blade geometry any good? And then is the heat treat any good? The heat treat might be crap and there's no way to tell 
if it's going to have a good heat treat or not, unless if, you know, the old boys like Kurt test it and stuff like that. And then that's still just an HRC number. That doesn't say how well it was heat treated. But you can pretty much guarantee if it's so cheap. Sorry, you guys know I hit the camera. If it's so cheap, it's probably not done very well, right? And then say this. Now think about this. If they're selling you a super steel for that cheap, right? They probably took the money out of the grind. Because in order to grind a blade, an M390, it's going to be harder to, to do that than, say, to grind a knife in 14C28N. Or even, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever, OS 10 or 440C or, you know, 154CM or CPM 154 or D2 or any of those steels. It's going to be harder to do that. So they're going to go through more belts. So they're going to need to save money there. So they're not going to give you a great grind and M390 for, you know, a steel, right? They're going to have to cut corners somewhere. And I know... This knife right here comes in 20 CV and M390, and it's a USA made, and they're, the heat treats, I mean, they're, I don't think they're performing, like, really good, but they're not, like, crazy bad or anything, and that's a really good deal what you're getting it for. Um, I think that's a, that's a hell of a deal, and I think the, the M390 Kershaw bare knuckles are a really good deal, and the blade geometry is not bad either. Could it be a little thinner behind the edge? Yeah, but it's good. It's not bad. Like, say this one right here. When, when I got this, or when I received it, I'm pretty sure it was new. It had a factory edge still, um, and I was supposed to sharpen it. Now, I'm going to show you a little clip. Very quickly, I just want to show these couple little nicks. I didn't put them there. I haven't done anything with this knife yet. I'm getting ready to sharpen it right now. And I just want to show the edge. It'll cut receipts. But it's not sharp. I mean, like, it's not sharp. I'm putting force down. Look at my finger. It's not sharp at all. And I could put the dent, but. So let's give this thing a, a good edge. Look at that. Nothing. But it'll cut receipts though. So that just means that what happened was was they put it on their belt and then they stropped it so much or um it's been stropped so much that it took the bite away from the edge. So as you can see the grip pattern, it's got a normal factory edge grip pattern, like four four to six hundred grit and then uh just you know stropped uh the edge completely off this is the factory edge let's look at it really quick i got a light on it so but you see how you see the grip pattern and then right at the very tip of it you see how it's just a straight line let's look at the difference between the factory edge and my 300 grit edge This thing was so dull, even though it had a sharp edge, like it could go through receipts. You could take a receipt and go right through a receipt, but it had no bite to it. So basically what it seems like is that they, they sharpened it on the belt and then stropped it or had a stropping belt. You know, like a, um, like a wheel that had like a, um, some compound on it because even though you could see the grit pattern going across it, which looked like about 400 grit or something like that, the actual edge at the tip was so fine. I mean, I could literally just grind it into my skin. It wouldn't do anything. So would it cut paper? Yeah. But would it cut the things that you're going to want to use your knife for? Because you want a little bit of bite. So when I put an edge on this, um, the, the owner requested a kind of a toothy polished edge, 
which um, I did not finish yet. I might still put a polished edge on, but right now it's got an 800 grit edge on it. And this thing's nice. And this is a gift to his brother. So his brother's probably going to be using this. And right now it's got a great user edge on it. I wish I could really focus you guys in to see this. It's got a great user edge on it. The grip pattern's really nice and straight. Oh, there we go. Right there. It's got a really, really nice edge on it. And I could take it up higher because like this one right here is 14C28M2. And this one's a toothy polished edge right here. So this one's a little more polished, but it doesn't have the bite like this one has. Don't get me wrong, this is very sharp still, but it's a little more smoother like um, than this one. This one's definitely got more bite than this one. And I just don't know. I'm going to talk to him and see if he'd rather me just leave it right here or if he still wants me to take it up a little bit higher and lose a little bit of that bite and make it a little bit more finer. Anyways, um, I also sharpened a Spyderco smock for him in 20 CV. Um, it's right here somewhere. Okay. And this one's his, this one's mine. So this one's in 20 CV. I sharpened this one. It had a factory edge on it. On it. And I put a 1500, I originally went up to 3000 with this. And for some reason, the 20 CV just would not it didn't sit well with 3,000. And M390 and 20CV usually does pretty good, you know, at a higher grit. It does normally. This time it, ju it just didn't. It, um, oops, sorry. It took a really good mirror. Don't get me wrong. It was a nice mirrored edge. But I, I, you know, I still had some grip pattern left in there. It wasn't like so much of a, I mean, it was a mirror to where you could read off of it. But in my opinion, it should have had still a little bit more bite. Now, I probably could have laid the edge back a little bit more. And then I would have gotten more bite out of it. But I didn't. I left at the factory angle. And here comes Kara. Kara, say hi. Um, well, maybe not. Something's on my hand. Anyways. But I should have maybe laid it back just a little bit more. But instead, I kept the factory angle, which is probably like 20, 20 thousandths. Or sorry, 20 thousandths, 20 degrees. And, but since I left the factory angle about 20 degrees, I wound up bringing it back. So I went from 3,000 grit and I just redid it at 1,500 grit. And at 1500 grit, Kara, say hi. Hi! And at 1500 grit, it's very nice. What is this very, shame very of nice. a careless review? Well, it's not a review. What is it? Knife talk. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So You'd this... rather talk to your knives than me, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on a second, guys. You guys should have seen a picture of the before and after with this knife with its edge and uh, yeah i brought it to 1500 grit finally you know after bringing it back from 3000 because it just didn't seem like it was very good at 3000 1500 grit seems really nice it's a fine edge not extremely toothy but nice and fine anyways but back to the knife talk Blade geometry is something we should be advocating more, should be looking for more than the steel. And, you know, it depends on the budget you're going to spend, too. Because if you can get the steel, right, if you can get the great super steel with a great heat treat and a grind, of course. But, you know, that's when it starts getting more expensive, a lot more expensive. And one of the reasons why is because of the belts it takes to grind it. 
you know, the time it takes to heat treat, you know, a certain amount of knives. Because, like, something like M390 or 20CV, it has a very small window for the temperature. And when I'm saying all this, uh, trust me when I say I'm talking out of my ass. So, I'm not a heat treater or knife maker. But, from what I understand, M390 and 20CV has a very small window of where you know, for the temperature on what it can be at. Um, I think it's like within, you know, it's within so many degrees they have to have it to have it have the best performance. Anything higher than that temperature or below that temperature, it's not going to be good. Now, something like 14C28N, it has a large window. So, like, anywhere for the HRC number, anywhere between 55 Rockwell between 55 HRC and 62 HRC, it does good, right? M390, we're noticing anything under 60 HRC, it doesn't perform worth a crap. You know, you might as well be getting S30V or S35VN, which you can get for a lot better money than M390 or 20CV for the most part. Um, but also, say if they do get you a steel right and the heat treat is you know done say average say pretty good what's the grind like is it going to cut better than a, a knife in let's say 154 cm that's nice and thin behind the edge has a beautiful hollow grind and just rips through materials and then also because it's so thin behind the edge even when it's dull it still cuts better then say a knife that is super thick behind the edge and it's like pushing a, you know, an ax through material. I mean, d would you rather have the M390 in a, you know, with a ridiculous blade grind versus say a 154CM that's got a beautiful um, grind? And this was an M390, I just grabbed it because it's thick behind the edge and doesn't have the best blade geometry. I still like this knife. I mean, this is just a more harder use knife and it's really not even a hard use knife, but you know, like that's the way I feel like it is because it's got a nice thick grind and it's just, it's not cut for, it's not ground for cutting performance. You know, is it good for for EDC? Yeah, it's, it's good. But now between this and this, cutting through cardboard or cutting through anything this thing's going to outperform this every day of the week if this was in 20 cv and this was in you know this is 154 cm i would take 154 cm over this grind any day of the week any day of the week i don't care if that would be m390 or 20 cv it just wouldn't make sense versus something like this it just wouldn't make sense so and what i'm saying is that why are we doing that to ourselves so many companies are doing that because they know we want that super steel. They know we want to get that, that great steel for the budget. They know we want it. And what we should be advocating for is the grind. The grind is what matters. Like um, the smock. I think Spyderco did a damn good job on this. I really do. And I'm just talking about the grind here. They did a nice hollow grind. It's nice and thin. The blade geometry on this, in my opinion, is very well, very good. Um, you don't see Spatterco doing hollow grinds very often. They did a nice hollow grind, so that means I'm gonna, you would be able to get many sharpenings from this. You can see how thin it is right here. Many sharpenings before it starts getting thicker. And that's good. That's going to equal a lot better performance. Because now, unlike another knife, let's bring back the Aussis. Where'd it go? I don't know where it went. Here we go. Let's bring back the Aussis. And remember, I like this knife. So don't, don't think I'm talking crap about this knife. Because I really like this knife. I carried it actually uh, yesterday. Um, that's why it's laying right here. But the, the, compared to the sharpenings, I'm going to be able to sharpen this a re ridiculous amount more than this knife because this one is just going to start getting so thick behind the edge it's it's not going to perform no more while this one will still be blazing through stuff right and this is actually in 20 cv is the heat treat done good 
you know i don't know because i didn't do an edge retention test and if you asked me i would say it's about average from sharpening it um i i'm gonna say it's not like a high performance uh 20 cv and the only reason why i'm saying this because i i it it's hard to say man because I, if i would have laid it back you know maybe sharpen this three or four times with different edges then i could really say it but just from sharpening it one time i you know it's hard for me to say it sharpened up really nice it's got a beautiful edge on it it just didn't really want to it took a mirror edge but it just didn't keep the bite i wanted it to now it could have copped that bite if i had laid the edge back but i don't know you know i didn't do that but i did like i said 1500 grit edge it's very nice now how is it going to hold up i don't know you know i'm not cutting anything with it now this one's an s30v this took a really good edge too i actually got a more toothier edge on this one than on this one so this one feels a little more sharper to the touch you know just because of the the bite um but it's still got a nice glassy finish you know um anyways my point is is that a good heat treat on a knife is amazing and we should be wanting that because the difference between a steel with a good heat treat and a bad heat treat is night and day it really really is and i'm learning that so much more the more and more i'm sharpening and also what's even better than that and i don't know about better but what's even greater or whatever is a damn good blade grind getting a grind that's made to perform these are cutting tools right don't get me wrong i know there's knives that are made for prying and scraping and stuff like that but for the most part our edc knives are made for cutting they're supposed to be passing these things through materials and that's what they should perform and do doesn't matter if the edge will hold up six months without sharpening it if it won't go through anything and also a knife with a great grind even when it's not sharp or when it gets dull it'll still be passing through materials um now these kershaws the grinds on them they're not done bad um i don't know if i already said this or not i don't remember but this you know this, this isn't bad you know that, that i think the grind on it's average it's pretty good could it be thinner behind the edge yeah they're about 20 thousands behind the edge and then um i forget what the thickness of the blade is that the blade's not very thick it goes through materials very well this is a great edc knife but there's you know there's grinds that are even better than that but we're advocating or we're buying the wrong thing i feel like we're, we're being sold so much on the steel rather than the grind and we should be concentrating on the grind and when we concentrate on the steel we should be concentrating on whether or not it's done right because the difference is night and day it doesn't matter if you have m390 if it performs like d2 it doesn't matter if you have s35 vn if it's done like crap like there was that one steel just recently ltk tested and it was um s35 vn the HRC was like 55 or some crap. 55, of course. And it was like a $30 knife. Of course it's a $30 knife. You know, they didn't... They got the, the steel and they just... they, You know, they didn't put the work in that it would have took to make it the right HRC. So now it's not going to perform at all. You might as well have four... I bet you a good 440C will outcut that s35 with a 55 hrc every day of the week guarantee it and all i'm saying is that for this knife talk we need to start concentrating on blade grinds blade grinds and then hrc or not even hrc sorry heat treat that's done well you know sometimes you are going to have to pay for it but what's the big deal Do, you don't have to if you can't afford a steel that's done right sorry a super steel that's done right you can absolutely afford a 154 cm that's done right there you know like this one right here this buck this is 154 cm with the boss heat treat this thing has an amazing heat treat i love this thing this thing's done well it's done great and i would pick this over a lot of knives in m390 and that goes for a lot of other knives out there you know, and that's the reason why I love 14C28N so much is because it has such a large window where 
companies can get it right. It's easy for them to get it right. Anyways, guys, that's the night talk for today. I love you guys. Peace.